lost my chills. That's so amazing. Oh my gosh, you people exist not on a flat screen. Hello, welcome to Oh, It's here, it's here. So many of you are here and it's been amazing. Many of you were trying to come in May of 2020 and then the whole world exploded. But we are here, we survived, we are one community coming together. So thank you all for spending the time being here and continuing to be such an empowering message to the entire Huntington's disease community. Oh yeah, I'm Jenna, hi. Uh, <laughs> no way. I'm trying to forget some of those details. What I want to do though is because this is all about you. This is built for you, because of you, in honor of you, in honor of loved ones. But we want to get to know you a little bit better. So I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of an activity. Um, and if you are not comfortable standing, please raise your hand if I call out your group. And if you don't want to participate, that's fine. But the idea is, is that we have this room full of people with different experiences, but there are so many commonalities. And we just want to celebrate you. So please, if you have come here after receiving a scholarship from HDYO, from any organization, association across the globe, will you please stand if you're able and willing? shows the commitment for all of those people who worked tirelessly to send you here. If you are an HDYO ambassador, please stand if you're able and willing. You're going to learn a lot about the ambassadors and they have an amazing booth, but please use these ambassadors as people to help guide you throughout the weekend and at the very least, being a listening ear. If this is your first time attending an event like this, if you're able and willing, please stand. We know the investment that comes into this. We know that sometimes it's intimidating but you see how many people are in the same exact circumstance. So please use each other as well as us to lean on if you have any questions. If this is your first time leaving your home country, if you're able and willing, please stand. keynote speaker, Charles Sabine. You all know him. He has been a tremendous inspiration to this community, and he continues to do so each and every day. So it's my pleasure to invite Charles to come up here. I have, I have uh, read Three red uh, dots on there, which means I have to be hugged a lot. Three. 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 Isn't she just brilliant, by the way? Seriously? You guys, you know, you are really lucky to have someone as impressive as Jenna. Um, happy, uh, Val ha not Valentine's Day, Pat St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. 
Are you having? Are you enjoying it? Yes. 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 Well, all right. Well, you you will be enjoying it even more in about half an hour, I assure you, um, because I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why you guys should be uh, super excited. There are more of them than uh, you could have been imagined. Um, and I'm going to tell you them now in a way that um, is different to the talks you will hear from the professionals who are so brilliant here, uh, here, here this weekend, whether, whether from companies or uh, clinicians, because um, they are bound by data uh, about what they can say. I am not bound by data. I'm just someone who uh, used to be a TV journalist uh, and who has lost most of his family to HD. So, okay. What is, oh, by the way, sunny Glasgow, who needs, the, who needs these? Who, it, you know, it never rains in Glasgow. You didn't need to give these umbrellas, no? At least, at least when HD yo's here, it never rains in Glasgow. So, all right, what's the first reason to be super excited? Okay, where we are right now with research. I've just come back from a... Uh, seven city coast to coast tour in the United States visiting companies with new cutting edge approaches to solving our disease. And these biotechs and pharma companies, what happens is that they invite me to spend a day with their scientists and their other staff to explain the unique challenges of HD and how they can best collaborate with the global patient community. And here in the UK, now I'm back, I will have uh, two more visits uh, later this month, one in Oxford and another in Cambridge. And now all of these represent very serious, indeed, new approaches toward not just the symptoms of HD, but more importantly, what's called disease progression. That's delaying or, or slowing the holy grail of, the dis of, of, of research, we're slowing or delaying the disease progression. And what's more crucial, they're all very different shots on goal. That, that really matters as well, because the more efforts we have which are different, the more likely one is going to work. Now these people, these companies are, are what's called in the medical world, industry, as opposed to academic researchers. Uh, and that means they're backed by real money of investors who believe in uh, the science. Uh, and to explain, to explain why that matters, I need to go back and tell a bit of my own story. And I noticed that uh, about, or at least half of the people here haven't been to an event like this, so there are probably people here, I expect, who don't know uh, my story. So I'm going to go back and give a little bit of it to explain this. So, uh, as uh, some of you do know, uh, about 16 years ago, I decided to trade battlefields in places like Iraq, uh, very similar to the one in Ukraine now, for the tougher one, challenging the unjustified shame and stigma facing HD families. I determined then that what I was going to do was take, up, take on the disease headlong, mess it up in any way I could with the same determination of the suicide bombers that were all around me at the time. So my coming out speech, as it were, was at something called the CHTI Therapeutics Conference in Palm Springs, California. At that conference in 2007, were some of the most brilliant academic world minds in the world, many of whom had worked on the location of the HD gene itself over the past prior, prior two decades. But as for industry, profit companies, there was only one, one, one company there. We were simply not on the radar of the pharmaceutical world. But 
I, would, I wouldn't have cared if I'd known it at the, at the time anyway. Well, I would have said, who needs them? Yeah. We've, we've, we, we had, they weren't involved in the amazing collaboration to locate the gene, so who, we don't need them now, right? Well, I've learned many lessons in the 16 years since then. And one is that for all the great ideas that may come out of our academic institutions and charitable foundations, they will get us nowhere toward becoming drugs that you and I can use without pharma. Without pharma, forget it. Whether you like it or not, we will get nowhere. In fact, I've come to realize that there is probably one graph which matters more than any as a barometer of how soon we will be able to manage our disease. And that is how many companies from industry are engaged in HD. So there was one there 16 years ago. At the 2023 CHDI conference next month in Dubrovnik, how many industry companies compared to that one in my firm when I gave my first keynote there? The last count, 42. That's happened in just 16 years. So imagine where the next 16 are going. So why are these guys so keen uh, to invest their very precious time and money in our disease? Well, I'm lucky enough to get to ask them that when I come on the go and have these uh, visits with them. Um, and the answer, well, because of the data that they have in their hands from studies like Enroll HD, uh, and before that, Track HD. The exponential graph of understanding of HD right now, born out of a global collaboration between researchers and new families, is unprecedented in medicine. It makes it the most exciting field to enter. Collaboration has created a, a snowball effect unique to HD, each discovery bringing another series of avenues of exploration. So that's the first one to be super excited about. So what's another thing that did not exist 16 years ago? You. This. HDU. It's more than just an excuse uh, to come together and drink too much Guinness tonight in a place like Glasgow. It actually has a crucial role in the, this fantastic global machine we have created, which is allowing us to engage with our disease head and shoulders above any other. Matt Allison, my God, what a great guy. What, what the foresight that he had. This, wouldn't be, this would not be happening if it wasn't for him. So, all right, so, so what, what do I mean by this having this, this all having more than just a, a reason to have a party? Okay, let's just take its role in Tom and Nielsen. If you don't know, that is the drug which has been uh, trialled as an ASO by Roche. And it's had its ups and downs. Um, but, as I will explain, it's another reason to be super excited. That, that trial uh, was stopped by Roche, the first one, uh, because some people had had an adverse effect from the drug. And the constraints of professionals to be bound by data and legal responsibilities mean that event became defined at the time as a catastrophe for our community. Now, Roche is organising a new trial, and these trials cost tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, remember, and they wouldn't be doing that 
had, they hadn't seen something in the data. And actually, they did. As they explained, and you can watch this if you want, look at my postcard from Palm Springs from last year, they said that yes, some people in the trial improved compared to placebo. Now, that statement was qualified, as it had to be, with the phrase, not statistically significant, so that they don't uh, appear to over-promise from, from a legal standpoint. But, as I said, I'm not bound by those kinds of restraints. I can say it as I see it. So, I'm going to do write something right now, which you won't have heard before, which is to lay out what I believe to be a self-evident truth. Whatever the requisite caveat uh, and, the, and what happened to other people on the trial, some people's HD symptoms improved with Tominism. So, therefore, here we go. This has never been said before in such a setting. This is the first time in the history of HD that a drug, that a drug has slowed the pro progression of our disease. It is a momentous moment and shows it can be done. It is a super, super reason to be excited. Now, one caveat with Tom Edison might be that it works better with younger people. Okay. So where are we going to find a cohort of younger people involved and enrolled in the HD collaboration? That obviously doesn't exist for a neurodegenerative disease, right? Oh, yes it does. Here it is. There you are. The new trial, HD2, with 360 younger participants around the world, is now underway. And if that's not enough reason to be super excited, again, wait till you hear about environmental enrichment. Okay, another of the big lessons that I have learned in the last 16 years, exploding another huge HD myth. That myth was encompassed, uh, was encompassed, <coughs> summed up in the words of the neurologist who gave me my test results when I tested positive. There's nothing that you can do about this disease, he said. Wrong. When companies like Roche are tra setting up trials of drugs like Tom and Erson, they create something called endpoints to enable regulators to have a way of measuring whether that drug works. And they don't have to suggest that they're going to wipe the disease out, just say a, a 5% slowing of the disease progress onset, uh, for example, would, would be enough. So to have that, have that little 5% that figure in the back of your mind now, while I tell you about some Canadian mice. These mice I saw at a research lab in Vancouver um, when I was there <coughs> a few years ago. And they were, these were mice with HD that, uh, that were separated into two, two groups. One group was in a cage with nothing to do, to sit around, no, no lights coming on and on, or, you know, on and off, that sort of thing, boring. The other ones had like lots of fun things to do, running around in wheels, and they could like you know turn lights on and off and get food and prizes and stuff like that. Okay, so that they were the environmentally enriched mice, and the environmentally enriched my HD mice lived 40% longer than the ones that did not have their lives environmentally enriched. Now. I believe that it would be highly illogical to suggest the same doesn't happen to us humans. Now, the problem is that it, it, it's hard to work out what constitutes EEE for us humans who are usually more complica complicated than mice, not always, but usually. 
also how would work, work researchers work out what they would call be a control for a human trial. So basically impossible, we can't do a human trial, so we have no human data. And this is where what I call the data ditch comes in. Because if there's no data for humans to suggest that environmental enrichment benefits, unlike the mice, for which we do have the data, no professional clinician or doctor or scientist can tell you that it is the case. Now, I can say it because I'm not a professional, but a family member. And of course, you know, it's entirely your right to say, well, I only want to listen to the professionals, not this bloke who doesn't know anything. Absolutely, totally, you're right. But I would point out that I have never found a single researcher, scientist, or clinician who disagrees with the following thesis, even though they can't say so on the record. So this is my thesis. All right, this is what I firmly believe. One, environmental enrichment benefits people in, in our situation. And I, when I say our, I mean my as someone. I know I'm, I'm presuming that a lot of people are here are gene positive, although not probably all. But anyway, those people. Okay. And a lack of it makes a lack of environmental enrichment makes things worse. Okay. And the difference number so that's one. Number two, the difference between hiding HD away, as my family did, and so many others that we all know about, and being open, or even better, engaging in Enroll HD or the HD Go, will slow your degree to your disease progression in the same way as a drug might. Let's say probably five percent. That's my view. So, my belief, by the way, is that this effect is magnified exponentially if you are doing it from a young age, as you are. So, just by being here today, you are already significantly affecting your later disease progression. And, by the way, there are a lot more 5% lining up in those biotechs that I am meeting up with, let alone Tom and Earson and the other ones represented in this building. <coughs> we can and will make HD a condition we can manage, not a disease that we have to fear so much we can't even speak its name. That I promise, have an absolutely <coughs> brilliant Congress. Thank you so much, Charles. And I think that what you'll find is that you'll experience this Charles's words that's hard to say, Charles's words, uh, throughout this weekend, and then hopefully carry that even beyond. So thank you so much, Charles, for being here. I'd be remiss if I didn't celebrate and reminisce a little bit about what HDO has gone through in the past now 11 years. We started with BJ and Matt, who came together and had common experiences, but knew that there were so many more people out there. So they started with the website hdyo.org in order to provide easy to understand information to the community of young people across the world. And they did this, of course, with some amazing helpers. Kat, Chandler, who are here today, were so influential in, in starting and making HDYO what it is today, of course, with Matt and volunteers. And uh, some of you may remember, maybe not all of you because you're maybe younger than these pictures, but may remember camps or um, different programs that you attended. And so uh, it just really the impact of HDYO continues to grow. So over the past 11 years, we have served more than 7,000 young people in over 90 countries, shared 200,000 resources, 
and our website is well over 7 million views. That shows the power of people coming together, the power of having information readily available at the tip of a finger in order to help provide that information, those resources, and that support to people across the globe. Our commitment remains strong, and that is to simply support, educate, and empower young people impacted by Huntington's disease. And we say up to 35, but we don't card you. So if you are over 35, you still have a family at HDO. I'm pointing at Tess and Dina. You know how old they are. I'm not yelling at her. So as I mentioned, it's really people impacted by HD. And this community is huge. It includes people who have been technically diagnosed with symptoms of HD, with juvenile onset HD. People who just want to learn more about Huntington's disease, feeling concerned for any reason, at risk, in a family with HD, know someone, a partner impacted, someone who's tested positive, negative, the list goes on and on. So if you have people in your family who need support, send them our way because the worst thing that can happen is someone feels alone because there are so many resources out there and good people who want to help. And it all sums up in the fact that we've become the voice of young people across the globe. So that is why this event means so much, because it's a continuation of the hard work that's been happening over the past decade plus to come together in person to be able to show that support. So why are we here? Why did you make this journey? Why did you make this commitment? It's a lot to come here. Travel, planes, train strikes, buses, more train strikes, construction, <laughs> weather. I mean, 